This is the Owens Valley, a region north of Bishop, California. After the Ice Age, this place was filled with these huge Ice Age lakes, most of which have dried up now thanks to a changing climate, and one dried up for other reasons. That's a story for another day. There's even an ancient pupfish that still holds on in some of the waters. Now, because of the waters and forest and the abundance and good climate here, ancient people would have found this place really inviting. As a result, we find petroglyphs here. Petroglyphs that can be thousands of years old, like the ones you see behind me, can be found all over this area. Now, some of these petroglyphs are a little easier to find, but others are kept local mysterious secrets, mostly for their protection. Now, as opposed to pictographs, which are drawn on, petroglyphs are actually carved into the rock. What these ancient people are taking advantage of when they make petroglyphs is surface weathering. It's the difference between the dark coloration on the outer surface of the rocks and that lighter interior coloration of the rocks. Desert varnish. Desert varnish is a dark mineral coating, usually of red or blackish hues, and it's the result of oxidized iron or manganese, which comes from dust in the air or sometimes water that affects the surface of the rock. If you've ever explored the scenic canyon lands of Utah, you've probably seen this as the dark lines down the sides of the massive red sandstone cliffs. Bacteria pull the material out, oxidize it, and deposit it onto the rock's surface. A nice coating can take thousands of years to build up, so we know these rocks have been here for some time. The rocks they carved into here are volcanic rocks, primarily a volcanic rock called tuff. Tuff is a rock formed from a collection of volcanic debris and ash, leaving us with a question. Where did all this volcanic material come from? Welcome back to Let's Go Geo, everyone. As usual, I'm your field guide, Heather, and today I'm exploring the volcanic tablelands of eastern California, an area that's covered in an expanse of volcanic material that boulders flock to for world-class bouldering with an unmatched view. But the ancients actually called this volcanic landscape home, and we see that in the many petroglyphs across the region. If we track this volcanic tuff, we see that it extends down the Owens Valley. So clearly there was a lot of ash, pyroclastic debris that flowed here. So either there were a lot of volcanoes going on, or there was one big boom sometime before the ancients showed up here. Geologically speaking, there's a lot going on here. Faults and earthquakes, hot springs, volcanoes. Everyone looks suspicious from up here. That's the Sierra Nevada mountain range behind me. And to the northwest, there's a rounded mountain that's usually covered in snow, and as a result, also carved up by skiers. Once winter comes, those boulders put their crash pads away and get out their skis and boards to hit that mountain, Mammoth Mountain. Beloved sports are the result of the same geologic phenomenon, a volcano, a big one. At the northern part of the Owens Valley in the Sierra Nevada range, we can see a rounded off mountain right there. That's Mammoth Mountain. And Mammoth Mountain is well known as a ski area, but did you know it's also a caldera. Here's part of an outcrop from this volcanic material. As you can see, it erodes into some pretty interesting patterns, arches and coves that we can hang out in to keep cool in this California sun. Now, if there have been a lot of eruptions over millions of years in this area, how do we know that this stuff actually belongs to our Long Valley caldera? Geologists can identify individual ash deposits by analyzing their individual chemical fingerprints. Deposits have distinctive chemical and mineralogical signatures that we can use to trace specific deposit to a specific volcanic source. And we can also determine the age of an eruption and its products by dating radioactive elements, which decay at a very specific known rate. So we get an age and physical and chemical properties and we can say, yeah, that personality matches that volcano. 
And it gets even cooler. Researchers have been able to study specific igneous lobes of the Long Valley eruption some 765,000 years ago and actually determine the specific timing and order of individual eruption phases. Pumice can come in amazing varieties. Not all pumice is created equal. It depends on the chemistry, the mineralogical component, the amount of silica, and the exterior oxidation. And so we get darker, lighter, and colorful pumices. And phenocrysts are relatively large crystals in an otherwise glassy, fine background that we call the ground mass. Now, pumice, as we know, is pretty airy and light, but it is described as a, being a glassy texture. It's essentially a bunch of glass shards held together. This material here, we can look at and see a lot of big chunks of pumice just held together. This would have been from a pyroclastic flow. Also, we find material that's more consolidated. That would be a tuff. And if it was really hot, it turns into a, what we call a welded tuff. Because of research like this, we now know that an enormous amount of this material flowed in several different lobes. One lobe headed north into the Mono Basin and Adobe Valley region. This was a later flow, and it ended up representing about 15% of the total volume of material from this eruption. And one lobe went east to the base of the White Mountain. One lobe went west over the Sierra Nevada mountains, filling the San Joaquin drainage. And one lobe went south, filling the Owens Valley and creating the volcanic tablelands. The eruption began in the south central part. Soon after, a lake in the caldera would have formed, like Crater Lake. It shouldn't be called Crater Lake. Another discussion. After that, magma and eruptions created a new volcanic dome, Mammoth Mountain. The Long Valley Caldera is part of a huge volcanic system in eastern California that includes the Mono Inyo craters. It extends from Mammoth Mountain about 25 miles or 45 kilometers all the way to Mono Lake. Eruptions have been occurring in the area for hundreds of thousands of years, but there's even recorded eruptions around the Mono Inyo Craters area as recent as 600 years ago. And there's recorded activity around Mono Lake as recent as the 17 and 1800s. In 1872, an earthquake with a magnitude of 7.4 was recorded about 80 miles south of the caldera. In 1978, an earthquake of a magnitude 5.4 hit about six miles southeast of the caldera. And in 1980, frighteningly close to the Mount St. Helens May 1980 eruption, four magnitude six quakes struck, and there were others. Despite these events, many people denied claims about the threat of a Long Valley eruption. Maybe it was fear, maybe bias, maybe tourism. But a combination of USGS monitoring, public education, that Mount St. Helens scare, and mostly four deaths finally changed the tide. The deaths resulted from carbon dioxide exposure, an invisible gas indicted by scientists for the killing of trees on Mammoth Mountain. And USGS monitoring has revealed that those earthquakes were accompanied by magma movement and several feet of uplift, including in the Caldera region, leaving us with questions about the future of this restless volcano. And in case you were wondering what this baby is capable of, the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980 was responsible for 0.4 kilometers cubed of material, while the Yellowstone eruption known as the Mesa Falls eruption about 1.3 million years ago was responsible for 280 kilometers cubed. But the eruption that created the Long Valley Caldera produced 600 kilometers cubed of material, putting it between two of the largest Yellowstone eruptions, putting it on par with some of the largest volcanic eruptions known in North America's history. Clearly, this region is very active, sitting at the junction of plate convergences that cause magmatism, deformation, folding, vaulting, and the volcanoes and earthquakes. Like the infamous Owens Valley earthquake of 1872, all those mammoth mountain earthquakes and the uplift that's been recorded, and the many eruptions that have actually occurred for hundreds of thousands to millions of years in the area. The native tribes and their descendants who've lived here for thousands of years have experienced many of these events. Who knows, maybe somewhere in their mysterious drawings and carvings lies stories of past unknown events. We might expect mammoths in these, but did we expect a mammoth mountain?
Hope you guys enjoyed this video today about the Long Valley Caldera and learning about the volcanic rock tuff. We'll be talking more about volcanoes and California's geologic history and all things geo here at Let's Go Geo. So join me on the next adventure. I'd love to see you there. Mm -hmm.